This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. It's Alex Bennett, and it is the Ramble. And the Ramble goes from now until midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and uh, in a little while, we'll get together with a whole bunch of our friends and exist as a citizen's panel. We'll find out what the hell that's about. But, you know, uh, every now and then we have a guest on this program. Usually during the first half hour, we try to have some kind of guest. And today is no exception. Okay, we always start uh, with... Uh uh, our next guest by calling him because he always is different and unusual when we call. Let's see if we get a ring. There we go. It's ringing. It's ringing. It's ringing. And yes. It's time for Armenian bandstand. Hello, boys and girls. Hello, how are you? How are you, my friend? It's good to talk to you. We should do the whole thing today in an accent. No, no any accent, indecipherable. It doesn't matter. We'll just make it up. It doesn't matter. We do the whole thing in an accent. I mean, we can't, what, kind of, uh, what kind of accent are you doing? I am from the country of Amtrakistan, where our where our economy was recently derailed. Ha 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 ha! That is Amtrakistan humor, my friend. Because my accent okay. here is completely, I have no idea what the, what it is. Is they okay? That's enough of the accents. What up, well, dog? No, I mean you can make up accents, and people think you're doing an accent, but you're not doing sure. any particular accent. That's right. When I was in high school, we had a a, 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 a geometry teacher named Mr. Gator. Who looked like Tweety Bird, and he smelled like an overripe melon, and nobody could tell if he had a speech impediment or some kind of indecipherable accent. But today's the lesson he's been with the numbers. You got to learn the numbers in the four and the three. And you go, what's he doing? I don't know. Is, is every hair, does he have a hair lip? Is he French? I don't know. We never figured it out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I used to do accents a lot, and I don't uh -huh. really do them anymore. I mean, uh, and I don't know if I can still do them. Can I do a French accent? Yes, I can do a French accent. That's I can do one too. I surrender. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> right. There goes the hate mail from the French, you bastard. I often wonder. Do you ever wonder what an American accent is? Yeah, to them it must sound really weird. Like, what are you doing here? I don't know. No, I, no but you know what? You know what I think? Whenever you ask a foreign actor, right, like a British guy, to uh, do an American accent, he always chooses a Southern accent. <laughs> because because in some ways it's closer to the British accent than any other accent in America, if you can believe that. Uh, in fact, somebody once said that the um, accent of an American Southerner is the most pure accent in America. In other words, it, it isn't the you know the the northern accent, or it isn't the California accent, which there is an accent in California from what I'm told, but I've never been able to hear it. I can't figure it out. Like, yeah. gosh, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Maybe it's but no the, accent at all. But, but the, 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 the southern Brit accent is like the English accent slowed down to like a, you know, a, a warm weather pace, well, I think. I lived in Houston, Texas for two years, and when I came out of there, I had a, 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 a Texas drawl. Because you get so used to it, because it is so easy, you uh -huh. know, it's so casual. It's just it, like you're talking like this, you know. So we're going down the corner and just see what that guy's see, doing over there. Yeah, let's go down and see Billy Bob, you know. Yeah, and Billy Bob Joe Ted. And then He's his own cousin, you know. What's even stranger is my ex-wife came out with an accent that to this day I think she still kind of has. Uh huh. And um. We, um, uh, when we came here to New York, I would call back to my friends in Texas, and all of a sudden, I would notice they had a Texas accent, where I, ne <laughs> where I, where I never noticed that when I was living around it. Uh. It's a very strange thing. 
And you do pick Oh, yeah, up especially people. if you're Jewish. Hey, how you doing, y'all? I'll give you a pot from the tuchus, I reckon. Well, what is the funniest accent? I, maybe Brooklyn? Brooklyn, yeah. Uh, Boston accents are kind of a no, <laughs> no offense to Boston. Why well, when I do that in Boston, I was with a girl from Boston once, and she was going harder, harder, harder. Yeah. It was making me softer, softer, softer. <laughs> <laughs> Some about the Boston accent kind of rose me a little weird, but uh, uh, they're kind of funny. And uh, New York accents are funny, even though I'm from there. And uh, you know, yeah, but you got your Chicago accent. I like the Chicago. Let me tell you, this girl, Large Marge Parker, was giving knob jobs for cash on the barrelhead in the back of Clark's Bar on Harper Street, or was it Harper's Bar on Clark Street? Anyway, she's taking all that cash. And she's buying black tar snack, putting it right in her arm. She's flying a Mars and the Stars in Chicago, the Windy City. Yeah. But anyway, I, so, and, and, and how about Minnesota? Well, Minnesota, like, I, Minnesota, you betcha. I can't do that one. I've, That's a I've real a hard it's a, you know, Christy McBride is a great Minnesota well, actor. Well, they did it, you know, for Fargo in the movie Fargo. And I respect yeah, sure. every, every actor who was able to do it. But then again, they get dialect coaches. Who work with them and that, get the dialect down, but that's a different. Just get a bunch of Minnesota actors and never learn how to break the accent. It's natural with them. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, all I can say is like wood chipper. That's about wood, it. <laughs> <laughs> wood chipper. Got your buddy in the wood chipper here. <laughs> yeah, but, Chip uh, it's a it's a funny accent. It, it, there's no question about it. Uh, it is uh, very twangy, very twangy. Yeah, accent. but California, I don't know that there's an accent out there. You know, there's a Valley Girl accent. Yeah, I know that one. Golly, you're going down to the valley. But uh, I, don't even, I don't even know what a California accent is. like an SM accent. It's no accent. I met a guy just, once who was an expert on accents. Uh -huh. And he said he could literally, uh -huh. if you brought him somebody and the person started talking, he could tell you within 10 square miles of where that wow. person was from. <laughs> He could tell you what their apartment number he was. He said that's that accents actually change from neighborhood to neighborhood, and that's true. Oh, holy shit. That's you, amazing. You, well, in New York, you kind of notice that, that that Brooklyn accent is different than the Manhattan accent, which is almost non-existent, which yeah. is different from the Bronx accent, which is different from the Queens accent. <laughs> oh, God. And these are, all, <laughs> these are all essentially neighborhoods, you know? Yeah, sure. All within the same area. Yeah. Pretty weird. I, I, I can I can tell a uh, New York accent, but I don't know a Brooklyn from a Manhattan no. or a Queens or this or that. No, uh, no, or Bushwick I, or whatever. Let me ask the big racist question here. So, I, because I want to sure. be like my hero, Donald Trump. Uh, uh, <laughs> do, do all blacks sound alike, no matter where they're from? Uh, I have noticed that. Well, let's ask David Duke. I have noticed that the Negro <laughs> accent is pretty similar, except for some certain slang words they use. No, no, but, but uh, what I'm saying is, can a black person tell a black person from California over a black person from Brooklyn over a black per You know what I'm saying? Or, yeah. Can, or, or, but that accent seems to be rather generic. Yeah. I don't know. There was, uh, I don't know. I was outside the comedy store one night, and uh, there's a black guy there, some street guy I'm talking to, and some other black guy comes along. Hey, they talk, they exchange a little thing. And he's going, yeah, hey, you're from Alabama, ain't you? Yeah, motherfucker, I do know Alabama. Yeah, the guy, the guy could tell from his accent he was from Alabama. I couldn't tell. But the guy, the guy yeah. nailed a brother from Alabama, so I don't know. Well, uh, in, uh, in, what was it, in Britain, uh, they, you know, uh, their accents are are interesting because they do change from area to area. You have yeah. the Cockney, you sure. have the, you know, the... the uh, distinguished uh, British accent. Uh, you have all kinds of accents there. Sure. And they say that that act, uh, they, but they do say the Southern accent in America is the purest form of English in America. Okay. Well, so maybe yeah. Okay. So maybe George Washington and the Southern accent. I don't know. So Billy Bob with his teeth, whatever. Billy Bob with his teeth missing is speaking better English than you or I. <laughs> there you go. He's speaking the way the kings did way back when. Yeah. Why are they so stupid down in that part of the country? I'm sorry if you're listening now. Why are they so stupid in the <laughs> South? There goes, there goes your fan base south of the Manson-Nixon line. Is it that they never get away, you know? I mean, I think every American, we should, we should do something. Uh, the United States should pay every American enough money 
to go to another country for like a month. And their enti- <laughs> no, and their entire life will change. Yeah, that's true. They will have an entirely different. One, they wouldn't vote for Trump if they saw the rest of the world. You know, that's true. Thirty days in Norway, I send you. Yeah, but the fact is, yeah, I sent you to thirty days. <laughs> I sent you to thirty days. Thirty days in Norway. <laughs> Norway. Open your mouth; it'll be sixty days. Norway. Sixty days in Norway. Norway's beautiful if you like ice. If yeah. you like ice and alcoholics, you know, I have a friend from Norway, and they have the, the beautiful northern lights and this and that, but it's freezing, and I've seen enough snow in my lifetime. Yeah, but man, it was it was uh, pretty. Uh, um, uh, it was co- it was cold. We left. Um, uh, what what is the head, the the head of Oslo? Uh, I, I think uh, Oslo. Oh, you've been there. Uh, I've never been there. Uh, Oslo. Yeah, I went there for for the uh, uh, what do you call it? The, the Olympics in Lillehammer. Uh, and we had to drive about 120 miles. And when we drove outside of Oslo, there was nothing but ice for 120 <laughs> oh, miles. Yeah. <clears throat> I've been to Saskatchewan in the winter. It's probably fairly now, similar. Now, I have to say that Lillehammer is a sweet little town, and everybody was all bundled up. So there was a certain equality. You couldn't tell a fat chick from a thin chick. There you, you know, go. Everybody's equal when it's cold. It, when it's cold. And uh, they were all very friendly. You know, it was a very friendly it's place. Right. But I don't know that it isn't just one of the most boring pit places on earth, too. Yeah. Yeah, when you've seen everything, you go there. It's like, well, well okay, we just lost one hour. We, now what do I do? We just lost our listener in Norway. <laughs> oh, right now, Gunnar's going, I laid up for you, chump. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'll, I'll, go, I'll go listen to Amos. I don't need this chump. I don't know if that's a Norwegian accent or what that is, but pretend it is. Norway may be boring, but I don't think it's so boring it's forced to listen to Don Imus. <laughs> Nothing's that boring. Right. <laughs> Not even Spionk. Right. So, uh, anyway, so I, uh, you know, I mean, I, I found that the first time I ever left the United States, and I went, I left the United States, first time I ever left the United States was when I went to England to find out if Paul McCartney was dead. Uh, 1969, who could forget? Wow. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, in those days, you had to have shots and everything, and they had to get them all for me in one day. They got me my passport. They got me my shots. They got me on a plane. They got me to England. Okay. Oh, my God. That's quick. And I'd never <laughs> been to another country, but that was not the way to go to another country because I was, like, so out of it constantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and then I went to, I went to Apple, and uh, Derek Taylor sat with Derek Taylor, who was the uh, Beatles publicist at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and and I uh, I was so tired. I'd gone 36 hours without sleep. And then he, he offered me a t- uh, some hash. They were sitting there oh, smoking yeah. hash in his office. Yeah. So I said, oh, what the fuck? I'll do some hash. I didn't think about the fact that I was tired. And I was just <laughs> out of it. And then he says to me, by the way, Ringo just came in. Maybe you can talk with him. Uh, okay, I'll talk with Ringo. I go in. Sure. I still have the tape somewhere, and I don't know where it is. But I'm interviewing Ringo. And in the <laughs> middle of now, I, I'm, I'm, when I'm doing interviews, I'm never at a loss for the next question to ask because I don't think uh-huh. of what is the next question going to be. I just let the conversation go on, and the next question will become obvious. Do you get yep. what I'm saying? Uh, and sure. the, the, most interviewers are terrible because they're sitting there not listening to the answer they're getting, but thinking about what's the next question they're going to ask. So I never exactly. did that. I'm in the middle of this interview <laughs> with Ringo, and all of a sudden, I hit a blank. Yeah. Uh-oh, boy. I can't come up with my next words to come out of my mouth to ask Ringo. <laughs> and I look at Ringo and I say, man, I am fucked up because I'm on the, just loaded from this hash and from non-sleep. And <laughs> Ringo very nicely says, you look it. <laughs> you know, a beetle never lies. And, and then I went on with the interview and I finished it. And then I edited that part go. out. But. That was, that That'll was be the my, best part. Right? Now the same thing happened to me with uh, with uh, with uh, Jack Nicholson. I'm throwing names out to impress people. Oh uh, yeah, that's how you meet the girls. Uh, I'm doing a show two o'clock in the morning at uh, W 
PLJ in New York. And I'm out earlier in the night, and my friend um, uh, uh, Ginger J. Walker, that was her name, uh, she had been in Ibiza. She was, uh, remember the guy who wrote the phony Howard Hughes hoax book? He was her. Oh, yeah. He was the baby, yeah, sure. She was the babysitter for his kids. Okay, and he lived on the island. That's where he, that's where he wrote the phony book. Uh, uh, and she brought back things called dormadinas. These were like the ten to a box, and each one was half a dose of quaalude, but it was just oh. sold over the counter as a sleeping pill. Yeah. <laughs> so she brought back a oh, whole yeah. bunch of them. She's want to do a dormadina. I said, Well, I don't know. I got a show to do tonight. She says they only last a couple hours, and then they're they're out of your system. I said, oh, Okay, I'll, I'll do one. So I do one. About a half hour later, she says, you're high, right? And I went, no, I'm not high. She says, well, here, do another one. So I did another oh, one. God. By the time I was through that night, I had about four Dormadinas, and none of them, Holy were, taking, crap. None of them were taking oh. hold. None of them wow, were taking hold. So now we go to the radio station. Uh, I take the last one about 10 o'clock at night, nothing. Now it's 2 o'clock in the morning, nothing. <laughs> Then about 3 o'clock in the morning, Jack Nicholson shows up. Oh, Lord. And I'm sitting there interviewing him, and all of a sudden, the Dormadine is hit. Boy, oh. oh. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> and, like, I don't know what Jack was seeing, but all I know is I think my nose was hitting the edge of the table. You know? <laughs> what the fuck And is I said to him... On? Because I knew if anybody in the world would understand what I was yeah, about Jackson, to say, Jackson would be it, definitely it would be Jack Nicholson, <laughs> who during the break was with Ginger J. Walker in the bathroom giving her coke. Okay? There you go. <laughs> so I knew I wasn't, and I looked at him and I went, and this was during a break, I said, man, I'm fucked up. And he said the same thing Ringo Starr said, only like Jack Nicholson. You look it, pal. You look it, pal. <laughs> Boy, getting wasted in front of the stars. Yeah, but I mean, I, it, was, it was a delayed <laughs> reaction. Somehow it laid my stomach and said, we're just going to wait till he goes on the air. You know? Yeah. And then we're going <laughs> wow, to get wow, him. Wow, they all hit you once. We're going to get him big time. Yeah. Damn, that's like, bam. <laughs> but anyway, what I was saying is, is when I finally started traveling and I went to Paris and first you go to England because you're an American and you know that you don't you're not going to have a language problem, okay? Yeah. Sure. But then you get brave and you learn you go to France, uh, where if you speak English they spit on you. Uh, <laughs> what a difference a border makes. I love that old saying: the French they are a funny race. Uh, they yeah, <laughs> fight with their feet and they fuck with their face. Yeah, that, that, they, <laughs> I think I don't know if that was Marlowe or Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, they fuck with their face. Yeah, that's how it ends. So anyway, uh, so anyway, I went to I went to France and I uh, you know, uh, yeah on my way to Ibiza. I was going to Ibiza because now I'd been so told about how wonderful Ibiza was by Ginger J. Walker. And I knew people uh, in Ibiza were living there. Uh, all the expats seemed to go over there, and it was a wonderful place. I mean, you know, everybody had a story. Guys who had murdered somebody back home were living <laughs> there. There was a guy named Louis the Lump. He had a big lump on his head, and he the rumor was he had murdered somebody. Oh, boy. And, <laughs> you don't want to mess with Louis the Lump, that's for and, sure. And I knew a major drug, a hash uh, uh, dealer who was sending hash between... Uh, uh, where is it? Uh, like Casablanca or Morocco and, uh, and, 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 and France. And uh, he would have women do it because they never, they never searched women. Ah. But anyway, it was just all exciting and everything like that. And, but I got to see other countries. I got to see other cultures. I got to see how other people lived. Sure. And it dissuaded my assumptions that they were all living in squalor. You know, uh -huh. and that their way of their their countries were terrible towards them because they were all healthy. They had they didn't have to pay for their doctors. You know, <laughs> yeah. and I'm going, geez, you know, I, my whole world has changed. So what you've got to do, I mean, what, what every American should be paid to go to another country for at least a month, so they get they don't just have the world be their own backyard. You know? That makes sense. Yeah, get out the, the get the get out law. 
I mean, if we went and checked all the people that voted for Donald Trump, I'll bet they're people who never traveled. Oh, yeah, never been out of their, their blocks or something. Never yeah. been out of their neighborhood. You know. Never saw a palm tree <laughs> right. if you live in New York. Damn those fucking Mexicans. But they never, they never were <laughs> in Mexico, although they would probably get an attitude if they were in Mexico. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go to Norway, thank you. Well, I see the other day. Oh, you know the show Narcos on Netflix? Have you heard of it? No, what's Narcos? It, it, Narcos is a uh, series. They did it about um, uh, who was the big uh, drug guy with the uh, Cali cartel. Uh, oh, the Medellin Escobar? cartel. Escobar. Escobar. Well, and they did, two, they did two seasons on that, and then now they're on to the Cali cartel. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, but they had a production guy on the show, and he got murdered by Jeez. the Cali Can't cartel. They, they decided Damn, we're going to send a message to them. Don't don't fuck with us. Yeah, Jesus. Well, you don't want to get too close. Oh. Yeah, this happened about six Gary months shit. Ago. Yeah, don't do don't do a show about those drug guys. They don't like it. They yeah, don't, they don't <laughs> find it very very nice. But I heard when they were filming Scarface, they were getting all kinds of death threats from the Cuban mafia and everything. <laughs> it's like, hey, don't be doing don't we get too close, man. They're just making a movie about it, but I heard it was a madhouse. But you know what everybody says to me? They go, "What? Uh, hey, Alex, uh, you you want to go to Israel, don't you?" <laughs> You're true. You should go to Israel. I'm sorry. Bye, later. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I mean, I got enough Jews here in New York to hang out with for crying out loud. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I don't want to get blown up anyway. Last so, yeah. country <laughs> in the world I want to go to is Israel. Yep. I have no desire. They're arrogant. God bless them. They're, God bless them. Long live Israel, but no, he won't see me there soon. They're arrogant fucks. Have you ever met an Israeli? I have friends who work for Israelis, and they never got paid, so that's enough for me. Yeah, I have women who say they went out with Israelis, and they'll never go out with an Israeli again. It's the biggest show of assholes. Nice. Yeah. I got my hand caught in his chest hair. It's still there. <laughs> <laughs> Help. My name is Isel Chach. Come on. And why, a box bean. and why do you want to go to a country where everybody's going to be complaining about their health? You know? <laughs> yeah, you think you're yeah. I mean, I'm a, hey. I'm a hypochondriac. I want that that franchise to myself. Okay? <laughs> exactly. I don't want to have to share it with another guy in another country because he happens to be Jewish, and boy, are my feet tired. You know? Yeah. <laughs> if I want Jews, I'll, I'll, I'll go to New York. Yeah, uh, go to L.A. I don't know how right they ever here. mounted an army. Everybody would want to ride, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, I can pull Jew jokes because I'm Jewish. That's oh, right. No. We can say it like uh, your brothers can say the N word to each other. No, but you ever have this? Like, if you make some fun of being Jewish and of Jews because you were Jew, they yeah. call you they call you a self loathing Jew. Oh, I've been called that. I go, well, what other kind is there? Then they shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Checkmate. Yeah. Self-loathing Jew. Hello. Self-loathing Hello. Jew. Yeah, yeah. No, I love myself. I love myself. I treat myself to many treats. So, so you've been doing any self- interesting work lately? Yeah, I did Comedy Day in the park on Sunday. That was a lot of fun. And uh, how many pe- see, how, what how else? many people showed up for that? A few thousand. It was all right. It wasn't like it's the old days where you get like Woodstock, but there's a lot of people there. Yeah. And the weather was good. It wasn't boiling, so that was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm doing, I don't know if this is going to, when this is airing, but on the 28th of September, I'm doing a special show at the Throckmorton Theater in Mill Valley. Mr. Rich Scheidner is putting on a show of all kinds of uh, show business stories, comedy stories, road gigs, L gigs, drugs, groupies, name it. So I'm going to be on that show with Felicia Michaels and Rich Scheidner and Doug Ferrari and, uh, and who else? Somebody else, but I forget who, and they're going to kill me. Doug but, Ferrari uh, still <laughs> doing comedy? Who? Doug Ferrari? Yeah. He's still, what else is he going to do? <laughs> What's he going to do? Yeah. Be a mechanic, we're going to be him, he's doing comedy. Does he work? Uh, I don't know, we got to ask him. <laughs> he's working that night. Because I remember, uh, speaking of foreign countries, and then we're kind of running out of time here, so let me speed it up. My wife and I were, my ex-wife and I, were driving down the... Uh, Côte, Côte du Jour in France. We live in Riviera, French Riviera. And um, I get a call. 
And I pick up the call, and somebody from the United States, and I go, uh-huh, 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 and I hang up. And I look at her, and I go, oh, uh, it was so-and-so, and he wanted to tell me that Doug Ferrari won the San Francisco Comedy Competition. Mm. <laughs> joke's on us, joke's on us. Wait a minute. <laughs> so now we're, we're still driving. We're like about 45 minutes in driving down the French Riviera. Beautiful weather and the, the water and the, you know, everything. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And at the same time, we both looked at each other and went, Doug Ferrari? <laughs> kind of overtakes what's going on around it, doesn't it? It certainly <laughs> does. Well, you know something? Once again, time has run out. Oh, water time has run uh, out with for, us again. For this call, not for our lives. So uh, if right. provided time isn't running out the other way in a couple of weeks, let's get together again, okay? Color me there. Color me there. Anything for you, Godfather. Did, was that racist saying color me? Oh, well, anyway, I'll talk. No, uh, <laughs> Negro me there, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Stephen Pearl. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you next week at the Fun Cafe. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? It's Alex, and it's, uh, it's uh, getting towards... Uh, uh, towards time now to talk to our uh, our citizen panel. It's more than one person at a time. Most talk shows only, if they have callers, take one one caller at a time. Here we take upwards to, I don't know, we've, we've had as many as 14 at a single uh, time. And uh, uh, the reason we do that is because we have nothing better to do with our terrible lives, both me and the citizens panel. And anyway, so let me open up the Skype lines. Now, we use Skype. If you don't know what Skype is, go to Skype, S-K-Y-P-E dot com. And uh, look up uh, that particular, you know, what, what Skype is and how you can get it. And how you can get it, let me pull my shirt out here. I, because if I don't pull my shirt out, you see these ugly pants that I've got. But I like those things. Girlfriend got it for me, and I guess I was, I, I've, been, I've been hooked on them ever since. Anyway, you go use Skype, and that's how you get in touch with us, and that's how you find out, uh, you know, you're able to be part of the citizen panel. And it's pretty simple, to be very honest with you. Um, let me uh, clear a few things out here. You know, occasionally, you, you know, I cancel. Occasionally, you will, um, you will find me uh, just... Uh, um, looking at a screen here and doing some stuff, and it's because I have housekeeping to take care of here. So that's what that's all about. Anyway, we're now waiting for people to call. This is where I sit here and just think, this is it. This is the end of the career. This is when nobody is going to call, and it's all going to be over and done with. Okay. But somebody will call, and eventually we'll have a citizen panel. Uh, you know, the news keeps going on and on. Uh, by the way, Trump's approval rating is up to 40% now. Uh, he's at least uh, getting, getting I, guess we're, I guess people are getting used to him, I imagine. Or maybe he's just doing a much better job now, huh? How's that? Much better job. Hey, uh, here. oops, oops. I'm sorry. I did that, Scott, and I'm sorry I did that. I pushed the wrong button. It's me. That's the kind of problems I cause. Let me call him. That'd be. Uh, it, it, this is a courtesy recall here. I'm sorry about that, Scott. I pushed the wrong button. I thought it was something I did. It's been so long since I caught you in the first one in. I thought maybe I got kicked off again. Or yeah, well, you should do that. Yeah, turn on your camera so we can see. Oh, I, I had it on. I must have. Sh it must have shut, shut off when I hung up so rudely hung up on you. Well, that's all right. Yeah, I can't find the. I can't yeah. find my. There it is. It's, okay. it, there. Pretty bad. Let me see here. I just uh, got uh, Phil Meyer here. He, he, there we go. Now you're starting. No, we're there. You there. Now we got both of them. We got Phil Meyer on your left, and on your right is Scott Boddicker. Scott, you're doing. You've done something with your beard, haven't you? You've kind of grown it into a goatee. Yeah, it's more of a yeah, for goat. <laughs> I broke the paintbrush. Huh? 
It looked like a paintbrush. It looks like a paintbrush, know? yeah. One of those really good paintbrushes you get from... Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, and look at the color in his face. You've been out a lot, haven't you? Well, it's so hot around here right now that, that I, 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 I do... I spend a lot of time out sitting around the pool, drinking beer and falling asleep and but you mean you mean to tell me oh so you you, oh so it's so hot that you go out there and sit in the sun yeah what is what is that all about well it was crazy when in august it was so cold i mean cool for august in texas right Mm -hmm. that you couldn't even get in the pool it was like you know it was too chilly so now it's gone up about another you know seven degrees since uh august or in september really it's it's very unusual for that to happen wow usually it's the other way obviously the other way around yeah so up there alex well you look healthy you look you just look great he does retirement is treating you well well, and the, and the fact that it's also I'm outside and now my allergies are acting up so bad, you know, and I'm taking all these drugs, I can I can hardly stay awake and come on the how show. Bad, how bad are your allergies? Because mine, for about three weeks, were killing me. Just killing There was something in the air because I was feeling just terrible. Well, I, I take enough drugs. I, I, I you know, it helps me, but it, it you know, they just they just make you drowsy. I take this Flonase stuff. It doesn't okay. work, at least not I, for me. Yeah, I used Flonase uh, years ago, but I, I I now just use a Surtec, I think it's called, or something. Well, you like know that. what I did? I, I I used some stuff I had sitting in my uh, drawer the other day, and I was feeling so terrible. I just kept having this thing. Eyes are tearing, and my chest is hurting, and eh, da, 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 da. just horrible, gazorchness. And I I was in, uh, I was in bad shape. So I took a pill that I had that I bought, and it's it's Kirkland. Hmm. Zithromax. What? No, it was, it's Kirkland. Uh, yeah. And and for some reason that stopped it. That, you when, know, I've, when I'm when I'm at that point that's where the cost my chest is hurting and I'm coughing and uh, yeah. uh, I just get them. I they give me this thing called a zip pack. It's five pills or five days worth of pills. Uh, it's a Zithromax. Oh, those are those are steroids. Are they, they gave they me that when I went down to the city MD, and it worked for a couple of days. But each day there's one less that you take or something. Uh, well, you take oh. two the first day and one every day. Oh after yeah, that's that. that's also another steroid. Yes, Mike. Uh, How about like a Benadryl? Wouldn't that help? No, that put me to sleep. Or if you take one. Well, hey, only uh, only if you take one. Yeah, that's all it takes to make you tired. Well, the, the complaining, Alex. Um, I, you know, I was listening to your uh, to your half hour, mm-hmm. and uh, what countries have you gone to other than Ibiza that were? You know, Ibiza isn't a country. Well, it, it's a place in Spain, but uh, other than that, where uh, what ones would you say were the most memorable? Uh, Oh, Beijing was one of the most memorable. Also, I mean, when I went out of Beijing, went to the uh, Li Valley, and mm-hmm. went on the Li River rather, with all those casks and stuff, and uh, and also then in that same trip, we went up to the rice paddies, climbed up a long way up to the rice paddies, and uh, uh, that's probably one of the most memorable trips I've ever taken. Yeah. yeah, and so, also the Great Wall, you know. But I mean, you know, to see the Great Wall is to see the Great Wall. It's really something to see, you know. So, so is I, I like the uh, the premise, the travel premise that uh, that you uh, that you brought up. In well, the first I was half. saying that if more people traveled, sure, they what would me, huh? What did he, I I I was uh, gold medallion. Uh, six years in a row on uh, Delta. Well, you always now, have to talk about all these little clubs you belong to because you spent no, a lot of money. It means 50,000 air miles a year. Yeah, yeah. So, so. Um, now, uh, and, and I'm a Republican, but uh, where, else, where, where has everybody else gone that, uh, you know, you'll remember for the rest of your life or an experience that you might remember from uh, traveling abroad? Well, uh, uh, we have uh, we have a couple of people here, like Rob. Rob, have you done any extensive traveling outside of the country? I know uh, he's gone to the Philippines. Philippines, Singapore, uh, England, uh, France. Mm-hmm. 
what place and what places what, places what places did you like in, in particular um i tell you i was i really enjoyed my time in uh london yeah. going to all of, going to see all of those uh mm -hmm. iconic structures you know the iconic uh, uh, London Tower and um, Westminster Abbey and you know seeing all that stuff and realizing and and the just realizing how old it is yeah it was all yep. inspiring to me yep I loved it yep. did you go to Oxford and, and walk around on streets that buildings were a thousand years old well I, I mean thousand how old is like when Westminster Abbey. It's like from 400 to, uh, well, you know. Uh, what, I, what I found was wonderful about the first time I went to England. Hi, Patrick, and hi to uh, Jeff, uh, and hello to Brian. Uh, hey, uh, no, the, uh, the, the thing that I, uh, that I, when I first went to England, that I said was just wonderful to me was anything, you know, I could touch buildings and stones that had been put together to make buildings that were older than anything I could touch in the United States. Exactly. You you're know? hit by that. It's fat. It, it just, that's awe-inspiring. I really mean, I, I, although you can go to a Pueblo here and go back a long way, but, mm -hmm. uh, but basically, you know, the, 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 it's just when you leave the United States, mm -hmm. you're, no, you're now a citizen of the world. You're no longer just a citizen of yeah. the United States, except for Phil, who didn't learn that lesson. No, well, I, I do the ultimate travel experience. I, I go to places where you need a tank to breathe, and the fish don't speak English. But, uh, you, you know, when I when I went to England, uh, that was the first major trip I ever took, and the first one uh, by air. Mm -hmm. And uh, what ended up happening was I got off the plane, and it was either jet lag or the fact that they operate on 50 cycles uh, electricity there instead mm -hmm. of 60, and I could actually feel a difference uh, in um, in uh, it was almost like an electrical field difference. Uh, did anybody ever notice that? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I've been there several places. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, uh, you know, I mean, I've been to some cities that smell. Yeah, yeah well, Amsterdam. Yeah. New York was, is one of them. <laughs> Amsterdam. Yeah, New York's one of them. Amsterdam was terrible. <clears throat> I don't know what it was. Those canals or something had sewage or something in them. But boy, did that town hmm. smell! Yeah, they say <laughs> they say that Venice is like that. Is it really? Yeah. It's supposed to be romantic. What is it? You're smelling poop. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. Well, the garbage barges right. in Venice they they bring them out. You know, they have these garbage barges. You know, just like we got garbage trucks. They got yeah. yeah. They got a barge. Jeff, I think Venice is is a lot cleaner than it used to be. And uh, I, I was there a couple of times, and it seemed to get better each time I went. I like Venice. It, I mean, oh, uh, I uh, um, uh, New York is cleaner than it's ever been. I mean, oh, it's sure. a, I mean, I don't know if you've been watching the show on HBO called uh, uh, The Deuce, but it's supposed to be New York circa 1973, and they probably had garbage wranglers who worked this show because they littered the streets, just the sidewalks, with garbage. Because that's the way it was. I mean, it was they that. They were on strike. It wasn't, always. That, it wasn't that they were always on strike. It was just it was a dirty city. We never kept it that clean. And uh, in the last few years, it's gotten so clean now that it's not fun anymore. <laughs> well, look at Pittsburgh 70 years ago, what it looked like versus what it looks like now. Is that the steel mills? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you couldn't breathe in Pittsburgh. You know. Oh. Yeah. So. Well, Trump will make that happen again. Um, well, it's the center of the Paris reports. What? Yeah, Trump, Trump represents Pittsburgh, not Paris. Remember? Right. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. yeah. How could you forget? He represents Russia. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and Bill, 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 Bill Peduto shouted back, you don't represent us. <laughs> yeah. And he's right, because Allegheny County and that whole southwestern region of Pennsylvania is the only one that went blue. Well, that, that's, that's state stuff. Uh, any other travel experiences? Well, I, I mean, know. I, you know, I mean, I've been in a lot of different places. Uh, uh, I, you know, I mean, I've been to Scandinavian countries. I've been to France. I've been to Italy. I've been to Spain. I've been to China. 
Uh, I've been to. Uh, I love it when people say to me, "Well, I've, I've been to. I've been to Tijuana." You know, I mean. <laughs> Or when they're at Windsor, Canada, which is across the river. I've only been to Canada Detroit. once. Only been to Canada once. Mm. And that was for yeah, the I, uh, Montreal, Montreal Film uh, Can yeah. uh, Comedy Festival, just for laughs. Mm. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, I've been to uh, South America. Yeah. Been to a lot I've of places. Been oh, I've been to Belize. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's Central America. Yeah, that. How about, did you go to Israel? No. I, I, the last place I want to visit. I would have think that Phil would have wanted to go there. There's um, good scuba diving there. Yeah, I, I, you know, one of these days, I, uh, and when I can get away for more than a week at a time, uh, that's one place I would like to visit. I, I was at a wedding uh, over the weekend, and um, one of the guys uh, that was there, uh, a black guy, said he had just gotten back from Israel, and for him, it was. Uh, 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 being in touch uh, with these things, just like you guys got from uh, England, uh, you know, seeing buildings a, a thousand years old, fifteen hundred yeah. years old, you know, him touching the Wailing Wall and, and thousands, these other things, it's really moving upon for him. Thousands, tens of thousands hmm? of years old. Mm. Uh, well, no, it, uh, Judaism's been around since what six thousand years, a little less than six thousand. What? what are you saying? Are you, no longer than that, Phil. are you out of your what, mind? What, what we are, year we are, is this? This is, I mean, this two, is Russia, 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 okay. right? This is 2000 BC. So you have to go back at least 2000 years to the beginning of Christianity, and Judaism precedes that. Well, well the Judaism, about 1 BC. What is it, 5728 no. or something? Yeah, uh, 1 so BC. The, no, it's less than 6,000 years. Well, but still. Less than you know, six thousand years. The cradle years? of humanity is only ten thousand years. Less than six thousand years. Yeah, you know the, the Hebrew calendar. What was it? Fifty seven. What's, what's, what's the youngest? What's the youngest? What's the youngest? What's the youngest religion outside of Scientology? Uh, uh, what, uh, uh, probably. Uh, uh, Jehovah uh, Witness. Islam. Islam. Yeah. It, no. it, it was founded in uh, six hundred A.D. Well. Wow. Yeah. What about the so, Mormons? Uh, the Mormons, Mormons, yeah, Mormons are newer, but I don't. But is I that a religion, a separate religion, or is that the same Christianity? But uh, you well, know, it, it's the Church of Latter Day Saints, but it, uh, you yeah, know, it's true. You know, it's kind of an offshoot of Christianity. It, 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 yeah. yeah, but um, extension or whatever. Yeah, they would call it. Yeah, but Islam, uh, Islam, I think six hundred ten was when uh, Muhammad, blessed be he. Yeah. Uh, wrote the first surah in the uh, in the Quran, as dictated to him. Uh, huh? Offshoot of Christianity, isn't it? No. Or Judaism, maybe. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. All three are, are connected Judaism. together. Yeah, Judaism. What what are connected together? Islam, uh, Hebrew, and the, and the Christian. Uh, well, cr uh, all that, three of them are, are kind of connected. All the three Muslims. Together. The Muslims don't cotton too much to the Christians um, no, but, but 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 when it comes to the Jews connected. when they come to when it comes to the Jews they're very fond of the Jews because the two religions are very very similar yes I mean yes. So uh, they like to kill the Jews first n neither one will eat pork as an example you know uh, and uh, uh, Except us yeah I mean and we believe in one God uh, there is some question as to the fact of whether the Christians believe in the one God because they have the Holy Trinity. And so there's, a, there's some, some argument about that, whether they are one of the true religions or not. Uh, they certainly know how to pass the plate around, though. That's damn, for damn sure. That's for sure. <laughs> they have, all religions do that well. Yeah, no, the Jews have a benefit dinner. Oh, Jews, you know, hey, Jews you got to build another you. wing. Uh, and they yeah, charge you admission. Yeah. That's right. Here, give me your check. Give me your check. Just give me a blank check. We'll write it out for yep, you. The, what was it? The, <laughs> it was it Larry David did a thing on wanting to go to Temple and not being able to get tickets? He was scalping tickets outside of the <laughs> uh, <laughs> outside of the Temple. Yeah, uh, uh, sure. Well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You know. Uh, here comes Tony. Uh, it's all kooky to me. Yep. Tony makes up. Uh, we're we're one, one short of a full house, folks. Um, 
you know. Um, and oh. but yes, yes, Mike. You were talking about sea pearl, about southern accents. I have something for you, a dictionary. How to speak a southern accent? You guys were making fun of the southern southern people. Yeah, I got the dictionary. It still doesn't make sense. Who wrote, who wrote it? Uh, Michael uh, Mitchell. Yeah, it's probably one of those goofy Steve. things about you know that it doesn't doesn't speak very well Steve. for the southern accent is as I said with Steve Pearl considered by many linguists to be the purest English in America. I thought Philadelphia was no no uh, because that's uh, well uh, they they have regions and Philadelphia is the number one region uh, you know they they, uh, I, they have numbers that they associate with the regions. And uh, Philadelphia is the number is not a number well, one on a scale. Supposedly, of good, bad, as but, an American accent, the the Southern accent is considered the purest. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we all think of it as goofy and stupid and sounding like this. But I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I've, well, I've heard some accents in that part of the country that I just fell in love with. Like, there's nothing like the Cajun accent. It is just well, a yeah. lovely, Radio. beautiful accent. For radio, I thought the Midwest accent was the uh, uh, was the no, one. No, I'll, I'll I'll point out why Southern accent is so predominant. Uh, most of your major newscasters had a Southern accent. You didn't even pay attention to it. No, you didn't pay attention to the fact that David Brinkley had a Southern accent. Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite. Dan Rather had a Dan had Rather. a Texas he was Canadian, accent, wasn't he? He had a no. He's a Texan. Huh. We're in Texas. Texas. Uh, who was the guy Texas, that went Canada, off the deep end? Texas, Canada, same thing, Phil. Canadian. What? Who was, the, who was the newscaster that went off the deep end uh, that uh, was a uh, Canadian? Wasn't Dan Rather? Um, no, that guy from ABC was Canadian. Uh, yeah. Peter Jennings. No, Peter Jennings. Him, yeah, but... Um, uh, there yeah, was he one went that, off the deep know, end. He died. Voices. What? The, the, the one that started hearing voices on the air. That was and, Dan oh, Rather. Okay. He was a Texan. He was He's a Texan. Really? Oh. Yeah. And if you listen to if you listen to him, you can hear it. But we was for some reason it it translates at least on in broadcasting. A lot of broad, wouldn't you say, Rob? A lot of broadcasters from the South with a Southern accent. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, all those guys that were were uh, 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 who were some of the big disc jockeys back in the day. And then they wound up having game shows. Uh, 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 Wolfman Jack. No. You had a game show? Oh, Ron, Ron Lundy is a southerner from Mississippi. Really? Yeah. WABC for mm -hmm. all those years. I think Dan Daniel, who I worked with, uh, yes, was Dan southern. Yes, Dan Daniel's another one. Another one was southern. He was southern. A lot of... A lot of Jack the... Spector from the South Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, ball. Jack Spector. I remember him in one very because we worked together again oh, at yes, WMCA. Yeah. Uh, he was the only guy I ever knew who could take one hair growing out of his head and wrap it around enough <laughs> times to make it look like a full head of hair. <laughs> you know what I'm Rob, talking you might about, right? The guy who, cartoon what? What, Jeff? Yeah. Rob may, might remember the guy who, uh, who talked for the Yankees many years ago. Who was a uh, yeah, Mel Allen. I used to work with Mel. Yeah, that's right. So oh, really? when you talk about the the fact that oh well, you didn't hear Southern accents too much on the radio. Yes, you did. You just oh, didn't, yeah. you just didn't notice them. Yeah, and they weren't hiding them either. No, not at all. You know, when you had mentioned that in England that the English accent was different from place to place, I thought it was different because of uh, economics and. Uh, uh, you know that it wasn't necessarily those that spoke Cockney were maybe more street oriented and not uh, as well educated. Well, it isn't a question of education. I think as much as it's who you grow up with. Yeah. You know, I mean, there is a I hate, hate to use the term because it's almost an out of place term now. Ebonic accent in this country that comes from blacks living in neighborhoods with other blacks and creating their own dialect. You're like Oakland and California, yeah. uh, they wanted to teach Ebonics in the schools. Yeah. Glad well, to stop that I, one. I don't know that Ebonics is a language as much as it's an accent. 
you know. Uh, but no, I mean, but there, but there's a they're, language. They're, they're, they have their own words. But I'll be walking yeah. down the street here, and there'll be two black guys talking to each <laughs> other. And quite frankly, I need a translator. Oh, <laughs> because I can't. I can't. It's very hard for me to comprehend the words they're saying. You know. Yeah. Uh, but I. I like, what? Like it's like the scene in in the movie Airplane where Barbara Barbara Billingsley has to uh, do translate. The translation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could be a slice of the porter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, the thing is, and you don't, re I'll, I'll refer to your life, Phil. There are professions in which there is a language and there is an accent. And cop is one of them. Yes. There are poli cop. Because police spend so much time with each other. They they have an accent. They have a method of communication and we speak. Have and speak. And so on, that uh, that denotes them. Uh, uh, you know, have numbers like, oh, I'm going to do a 187 PC on no, that. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about an actual accent that takes place after a while. Uh, uh, you know, because you guys, you know, know. You, oh, you know, you spend your whole life in a car with somebody else, and eventually, you know, the two of you are going to have this line of communication that's estranged from everybody else. But this is my main complaint about police is that we need more policemen back on the beat again because when they were on the beat, they were dealing with the average person. When they started traveling in cars, the only time they ever got out of them was when something bad was happening. So their perception of the world outside that car was different than it was when they were walking the beat. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I've complete silence from Phil. I must have said I, something. I don't agree with I had, you. So. What do you mean you don't agree with me? Well, uh, or, or in the go last, find a local donut shop. The last 20 years, uh, cops have been outside the car. They've got bicycle patrol. They've got community We're policing. We're talking about right now. I'm talking about there was a period of time What's right where now? police, where, where we, took, we took cops off the beat. The great thing about the beat cop was, number one, he usually lived in the neighborhood, okay? And the beat cop knew all the people. The people knew him, you know? And there was My a, grandfather there, owned there was a, a liquor store yeah. in Queens on Hempstead Turnpike, right next to Belmont Racetrack, the, right across the city line, right across from Nassau's Queens mm -hmm. line. And as a kid, yeah, on the same side as Belmont Racetrack uh, in Hollis. And I, when I was a kid, I spent a lot of time there because he used to, you know, he was, it was like a prison sentence. You're there until 11 o'clock at night. So there were many evenings where I'd get picked up after school and uh, and spend eat dinner in the back of the store and hang out till about eight o'clock or whatever when my mother would take me home and the local beat cop would come in and just hey frank how are you doing and just you know passing by and you knew mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. he had he in fact he gave my grandfather a cap one of his caps to hang up like on a uh, just on a, on a on a hook so that it looked like there was a cop in the store, like, you know, the guy was in the back. He's like, you know, hang my hat up here. And you knew these guys. And it was very different than it is today. No question about it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think that's where, where part of the problem really began. I think that there was a certain, like, a certain trust in a neighborhood with the local cop who used to walk the beat. And you'd talk to him and you'd know him by his first name or officer so-and-so. Yep. And, hi, how are you, Mrs. McGillicuddy? And, you know, how the, are you? The guy. But the, we, but, but the guy, the guy I was talking about that went to Israel. His name is Derwin. His last name starts with an L. I didn't want to say it over you the know, air. You meet one but, black guy, and all of a sudden no, he you're, is, he you're, you're speaking cop. ebonics. When uh, Michael Bay and the um, uh, uh, what is that bakery that was uh, in Oakland where they killed the um, uh, the uh, that educator um, in, in Oakland? It was uh, uh, you know the Black Panthers. Uh, it was Michael Bay's mother, because Derwin walked that beat, that gave him all the information that led to the uh, to their arrest and uh, the um, uh, the solving of that crime. He uh, because he walked that beat, and that was that. It just so happens that was the guy at the wedding, and that was the guy uh, that went to Israel. And uh, Der, you know, uh, Derwin. Uh, you know, uh, he was a sergeant at the time, but he had gained their trust over the years of walking that beat. Well, that, that, that's what I'm talking about. But we started taking cops off the beat. We started putting them in police cars. 
And whenever there was a problem was whenever they got out of the car. And that was the only public they came into contact with, were all the bad people rather than the good people as well. And that's when cops' attitudes got so fucking bad and really bad. Yeah, it's a... Uh, I don't know. I, you know, there, there's always been there's always been cops with bad attitudes, and there's been cops with good attitudes. You know, uh, it's uh, very easy for uh, especially young cops to get what's called but, bad. But no, all I'm trying to say, Phil, is that you're not going to do anything but have a bad attitude if the only time you ever meet the people in the neighborhood you're patrolling is when you get out of that car and there's a problem. Well, you know the reality. And, and, and by the don't... way, w when that cop shows up. And all of a sudden, the visceral attitude on the part of the, say, black community is, uh-oh, here are the white people guarding our, our, our prison here. You know, when, they, when it becomes well, that attitude, then you, you've, got, you've got nothing going for you. You've got a real well, I, problem. I, you see, the, the thing is, is because of the shortage of cops and, and the amount of time that they, they, they need in the car to go from assignment to assignment to assignment. They don't get a chance. All uh, in I'm saying cases. is that's what was, was endemic in causing the problem, Phil. You know, uh, uh, the, the fact that a black person looks upon a white cop or even a black cop as mm -hmm. people who are not patrolling the neighborhood to create safety but are there to watch out, out over them and, and to make sure they don't make trouble. You feel like prisoners, and these are the prison guards. You know, and, uh, and I don't care what you say, Phil. Sure. You can make any excuse you want to, and all those excuses may fly, but still it doesn't solve the problem. Look, if you're not making any trouble, you don't feel like... Oh, uh, that's uh, bullshit. That's bullshit, That's we bullshit, from a lot Phil. of people who they could just drive around a neighborhood and get pulled over because of the color of their skin. I've been pulled over by cops. I've been pulled over. No, they're not. They're driving. I, I was pulled over by cops in Miami. I've told this story before yeah. when I got out of the radio station, and it was some cops who had heard that I'd said something nasty about the police department, and they brought along police dogs and everything snarling at me and had mm -hmm. me literally for a half hour uh, with my hands on the hood of the car. Uh, and, uh, you know, did, did you, did, I didn't do anything. Okay, did Phil. you tell them that you weren't black? No, I didn't. <laughs> oh, I was going to ask if they, uh, if any of them whipped their dick out, wanting to beat it on your face. Yeah, well, well what, what happened car was car. A, a friend of mine saw Fucking what was a, point, a, point. a friend of mine saw what was happening, pulled yeah. over into uh, it was off it was off one of these uh, what do they call them causeways, and, yeah. and he he saw what was happening. He pulled off onto this. Uh, Little 79th, 163rd. But, uh, you don't have to show uh, me to Miami. I, I think more of you if you'd forgotten Miami. But anyway, <laughs> uh, um, he um, uh, uh, said, uh, what's happening here? That's Alex Bennett. He works over at the radio. And they said, get out of here now. And they told him, if you don't leave right now, we'll arrest you too. Mm -hmm. And he took off. Well, uh, I made my reservations today. I'm flying well, in the Fort know, Lauderdale. Why are you changing the topic here? We don't well, care yeah, whether you're going to Flo Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> I'm not sure. uh, you know, again, uh, another... Going to Fort uh, Lauderdale, Alex, you get skull-fucked by those cops who tried to, get, who tried to yeah. uh, arrest you. I'm going to miss them for them and say... Yeah, they can't skull-fuck you, but, Alex, but, so they're going to skull-fuck you. But any, anyway, no. it was one of the most, most terrifying experiences I've ever had. Yeah. Now, am I supposed to sit around and love every cop after an incident like that? Fuck no. Maybe. Well, you know, it's oh, not every oh. cop that did that. Oh, oh, it's not every cop that did that. Well, it's not every black person that commits a crime, yet some of the cops think they are going to. You know, it's uh, no different than blaming Jews for uh, whatever well, see, uh, you you know, one might change, have done to You always change the topic. Right. Well, it's, it's, it, it, uh, it's not a simile. The, you, you have no idea. Much, you have no saying. idea what it's like to live in a black neighborhood. They had to give your child a, a lecture at a certain age that if you stop by a cop, don't get sassy. Just be be nice and quiet and do what they say. It's called it's called the talk. Uh, but you know, but you wouldn't have to give that talk if the cops weren't assholes. Yes, Patrick. I got that talk. I'm not black. Oh, really? You got that talk? <laughs> I, I got this were. because it's called fucking respect. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Well, I, 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 you know, 
Those who want respect, earn respect. That's Most right. Earn. There you go, Brian. There you go. No, not when you're and a when when you're they, a teacher, they did earn it. You're out, period. Whether they're an officer... They have that fucking badge, Phil. They didn't just earn it because they got that badge. No, they they earn oath. it whenever they uh, establish they, they a report. They an oath, a sworn oath. That's what they did. And, and uh, they the, devoted months of education and uh, pushed themselves months to the of limits education? to be able Wait to a minute. Hold on a second. I want to know where that curriculum is because I'd like to be a doctor and be able to do it on months of education. Uh, it's a little different. You know, what they get paid and what a doctor gets paid is two different stories. But, you know, the, the doctor isn't, do isn't cops putting get his paid? life on the line. How much do cops get paid? Uh, depends on where they are. It's anywhere yeah. from thirty thousand to one hundred and fifty thousand. Oh, uh, one hundred and fifty thousand. That's the ones on the take. Uh, well, <laughs> no, those are the you know, administration guys that oh. work traffic. Suffolk uh, County uh, Police. Get a lot yeah. over. They make that much money. Suffolk County uh, Police, Long Island, Island, are amongst the highest paid cops in, how how much in the country. How much do they make? How much do they make? Oh, they're well in the, really? in the six figures. Holy I think it started shit. about eighty eighty five. You know, there's a janitor at at, at the BART. Uh, and BART is the Bay Area Rapid Transit that made three hundred twenty-one thousand dollars last year. A janitor? Was that Time. that much change falling on the ground? No, no, that's, uh, you know, that's just locking, uh, locking all the restrooms so the black people can't get in. Oh, see, <laughs> really? I want that. Job. And besides that, the homeless. Am I correct, Bill? Yeah, they don't want the homeless using a restroom either. Well, They'd rather them shit on the sidewalk. Let's change topic here oh, because I, 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 th I think it's important that we keep the topics going. Um, today we had a uh, an expert uh, on insanity uh, state that our president is uh, insane. Uh, what a shock. Huh? What a, what a shock. shock. And do you know who that expert uh, uh, do you know who face. that expert on insanity Dr. was? Dr. Phil? No. I Kim, Kim Jong un. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> well, one to no one. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He said uh, uh, Kim Jong un insane. says Trump's a threat to the uh, at the UN to totally destroy North Korea reflects mentally deranged behavior. Do you know something? That's, That's the first right. time Kim Jong Un has said anything that approaches sanity. Correct. Well, maybe uh, you know he's, he's using that scared straight uh, mentality that the cops use. You know, when they get some kid that uh, you know they they bring him to the prison and they show him they you know, they talk to the other prisoners and they see what it's like. It's called scared straight program. Maybe uh, Kim Jong Un is uh, is getting scared straight. Oh yeah, really? He's yeah. Not scared? So, what, he's, he's not he's scared. scared. It's cool. embarrassing what 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 our president is doing. He he is the big bully who has all of the power, the firepower of the United States government behind him, and he should be more uh, a little bit more. Did, he shouldn't be calling a guy Rocket Man. What did uh, 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 what did what did Theodore Roosevelt say? Walk uh, softly walk and carry a carry big stick. No, walk uh, talk softly and carry a big stick. He's Trump's carrying a big dick. Yeah. He's got a small uh, but uh, here you got the an expert. With his tiny hands, I'm sure it seems. Oh, uh, what, 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 are you, what are you holding up there? What is what is that? Uh, what, is, what is that? I don't see that. Jeff is holding up a picture, and I can't make him. Let's see if I can change it a little bit more. Well, what is it? It's Phil with Trump on top. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're an artist. Show it again. I didn't see that. I just, like let me see. Let me, let me blow, to put you. it up there to the camera, and then let me open up your, your panel largely so that we can. I just clicked on them to oh, make it bigger. Hold on. Uh, up there we go. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Like there we go. Uh, bring it down just a little bit. Down just a little bit. Oh, there we go. Okay, and that's, that's uh, you see, you see the full head of hair, Bill Trump. <laughs> I gave you a lot of hair in the. Yeah, he gave you hair plugs, yeah, is what he gave you, Phil. It's pretty far forward. He gave you plugs. Yeah. Where's the foreskin? Where's the foreskin? That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn on your camera, uh, Brian. It disappeared. 
And look, <laughs> the amazing disappearing Tony. He always disappears. We have no idea where he goes, but he goes somewhere. Mother and, calls, dog barks. There's a number of uh, reasons for his disappearance. Uh, uh, yeah. Now, the, the by the way, the bomb that uh, Kim Jong-un blew up a couple of days ago mm -hmm. created a 6.5 earthquake in North Korea. Nice. nice. Yeah. I mean, near the near the impact zone. It was an underground what did, blast. What, what did they have in Mexico? What was that uh, strength 7. of that? Seven point one. Seven point one. Yeah, that's pretty. Well, that's, heavy. A six point five is uh, is not anywhere as strong as a seven point one, but that's not bad. You would think uh, that a few of the huts and uh, <clears> rice <throat> paddies. You know, they 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 don't have where where in his country is he doing these bombs? Uh, you know, we know it's north, not in north, the up urban. north. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Jimmy, uh, uh, now, uh, also, um, but uh, it says here, North Korea's foreign minister warns his country could test a hydrogen bomb <clears throat> over the Pacific Ocean in response to Trump's U.N. speech. Now, that's definitely in violation of the world. Yeah, but in violation, not in violation of anything, because he doesn't belong to anything where he can violate it. No, but the rest of the oh, world. Oh, yeah, it's in violation. Don't, don't, it, it, there's a rule. Don't let loose any hydrogen bombs oh by the way if you're a country we don't talk to don't have diplomatic relations to i guess you can use the bomb no i don't think so you know well, you, what you, you know the what rest it, of the civilized world let's say they blow it up in the air over the pacific ocean somewhere not on the land mass or anything else just do that doesn't that put radiation out there well, well, yeah, and cause what, what uh if, cause damage well, to other well, countries yeah, what what are you what are you going to do to them what are you going to do to them Come on. Turn his country, oh, his oh, rice paddies. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And then you, you're going to kill all those innocent people. Yeah, yeah. that's just a casualty that's of the war. That's the Republican man. way. Huh? Right? Kill people. Yeah, right. And give out medals. <laughs> In North Korea. Have you seen some of this? Have you seen, to begin with, all, uh, I think we mentioned this last night, that all the guys surrounding Kim Jong-un, all his military are like really old farts. I mean, they're yes. like 80 years old, and mm -hmm. and um, they. I'm surprised half of them aren't dead by now because he puts so <clears throat> many medals on them that I don't know how they stand up straight. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, you know, many of those medals are the ones that they wear in hospitals to see how much uh, radiation uh, has, uh, you know, they're getting. You know, the uh, it's sort of a detector that... Mm -hmm. uh, Let's them know. Oh, can't can't launch any more bombs this yeah. month. But anyway, um, uh, that. But Kim Jong Un says that he's deranged, and I I think that it takes one to know one, and I think we should we can take that to the bank, you know, we can take that one to the bank. Now, also, have you heard about Jimmy Kimmel's big fight? Oh yeah. Uh, what, what, uh, what, 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 what's the guy's name, Brian? Do you remember the the senators? Uh, is it Cassidy. 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 That's right. Uh, Republican uh, from Louisiana. Yeah, I, I yeah, think. yeah. He he supposedly had a meeting with, you know, uh, the thing with. Uh, was it just him though? He went off on Cassidy on Kill Brian Kilme, calling him a creepy little uh, phony or something, and I couldn't agree with him more on that. No. I, I can't. Well, it. here's well, the thing. guys are all phonies. Here's the oh, thing. Of course they are. Here's the thing. Uh, yeah, it's Bill Cassidy. Lindsay, the guy's name. He also went off on Lindsey Graham too. Yeah. What happened was, is he, 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 you know, his child was born with a what, hole in his heart or something like that. A congenital yeah. heart. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, it, it was, it, he, his life was saved and the kid is going to be fine eventually. Yeah. He has to have a couple more operations. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Jeff knows a little bit about heart stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, those, those kind of things are, are very, I, I want to say common. Yeah. Uh, you know, not... One out of a uh, hundred, but uh, a lot of kids, because as a kid is, is being developed, that part of the heart is separated. And there is a hole there yeah. at the beginning. And, and that hole allows the blood to be flowing from one side to the other. As the, as the, the baby becomes a, an alive a baby in minutes, it theoretically closes 
for everybody. But if it but doesn't, you get what you call it. If it doesn't, you get what's called a blue baby. Am I right about that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now and, that's. I don't know if it's called that any anymore. Yeah. It was when they it's were kind Democrat. Of an old name. Well, the Smurfs still call it that. So. <laughs> so if it's a Republican parent, is it a red baby? You know, you get the blue and the red. Yeah, I know. You know, when you have to explain a joke, it's not worth I telling, Phil. I keep telling you that. When you have age. to explain them, you, you at, know. At and, your and, age, the other, you and the other them. part is when you tell a joke and then you laugh at it and you're telling us, well, that's a joke, then it's not really a joke. That's what I hate about Bill Maher. He laughs at his own jokes. Uh, I think you tell a joke and the audience laughs. That's the rule, okay? And if they don't audience? laugh, it's not funny, mm. you know? But anyway, uh, but Kimmel's kid was born that way. And Kimmel said, much to his credit, he said, you know, he says, I'm well known. I, 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 am, I have money and I was able to take care of my kid. He said, but a lot of people can't. And it, 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 somehow this heart condition is considered congenital by insurance companies. Oh, my God. Yeah. So anyway, uh, he, f he fought for better you know, circumstances surrounding health care and the children especially should get the benefit of free health care. And he, this guy Cassidy he sat down with him and Cassidy assured him that he was going to write a bill in which there were no pre-existing conditions. Oh, that's what they consider it, a pre-existing condition. If you're born with a hole yeah. in your heart, it's a pre-existing condition. He didn't he, say he was going to write a bill. He said he was going to send them a bill. But, but anyway, he, he said he was on his side. He was going to do everything he could. And then all of a sudden, here comes this guy, and none of this is true. None of the things that he uh, said to Kimmel uh, did he wind up doing. And at the time, Kimmel said, this is a good guy, because this guy's going to go to work on this. So he just blasted him on his show. And it was called the Kimmel test yeah. as to whether it's a good bill or a bad bill and whether that bill takes care of people or doesn't take care of people. And so, uh, and Kimmel's gotten a lot of, you know, Kimmel, who is basically just Mr. Funny Man, uh, is suddenly found himself in the middle of a political debate, and uh, but a, but a, but an honorable one, and one in which he has a vested interest because of his kid's situation. Uh, now, maybe I'm alone in this. But I, what? Maybe I'm alone in this, but I think that in the last ten years, I remember, I remember Jimmy Kimmel when he was co-hosting the Man Show with uh, yeah. Adam Carolla, and I think yeah. uh, I think he looks better now than he did then. Oh, he's 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 become a yeah, real he, a real talent. I mean, he knows he, he knows for, what doing a late night talk lose, show is all about. Did he lose weight? For, or uh, was it? Yeah, he lost Dave, weight. Yeah, Dave like Stanley fun. from Stone Stanley Productions, where the people that produced the Man Show. So, and, uh, so what? Cousin. So, hmm? why is it it all comes back to you? It always comes back well, to me. Yeah, uh, and Stone Stanley. Oh, he's a cousin. Uh, yeah, but the cool. Man Show was just mentioned in in passing here. No, I just gave his background, you know. Uh, you know. No, uh, someday I'll mention all the people I was, I'm related to. You always do. No, I don't. I don't have any, I really don't have any relatives you would know about. Oh, no, not relatives, yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. I heard that our uh, governor from New Jersey mm -hmm. was, oh, on, was on the show uh, on TV the other That's day being, being interviewed. And somebody asked him about the kin, what do I call it, the Kindle effect? The Kimmel, uh, the Kimmel, Kimmel test. Kimmel. The Kimmel right. test. And he go, and they said, well, what do you, you know, where are you on that uh, equation? And, and he goes, I, I'm not going to respond to anybody about some kind of comedian guy. Uh, all we care about is, is governors and and senators and congressmen, the people who really have to make those decisions. Well, I mean, we, we I, I, let, me be, let me say something, and I'll go to you, Brian. Uh, we could just say, like he said, oh, he's just a comedian. But no, he's a comedian who went through a situation in which, he ne which now makes him an expert. You know? Yes, Brian? No, I was just going to say, I saw a clip for that uh, uh, the on YouTube with the... Uh, uh, Chris Christie and I was yeah. just going to say, you know, he's saying all these things, he's rebuking all these things, 
this reporter laughing jovially while his double chins, <laughs> triple chins, laugh with him. So you know, as far as I'm concerned, he has no credibility. Didn't whatsoever. they put Jimmy Kimmel on the on the dreidel? Olive bait, Kimmel, dollar. If they did, they'd lodge it up your ass. You know, the only the only sound effect I will allow you to play. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Make it spin faster. Yeah, I will um, allow you to play one sound effect. Yeah. Okay. Every time you tell a joke like that, when somebody it, and then nobody laughs, you play yeah. crickets. Uh, I don't have yeah, crickets. I can do. I can do a cricket. I got Listen. dog barking. No, 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 no. Keep I away. Know, keep your hands away. Move away from the sound machine. Move away <laughs> with your hands up. Move away from the sound machine. Yes, uh, yes, Rob. Who is the Republican senator who who came out and made the really ridiculous statement about this uh, this this new bill for health care, saying that Grassley. at this point, what's his name? Grassley. Yeah. He came out and said that the fact that we have told we've been running for what seven years now on repeal and replace it's more and am- it's more important than what the contents of the bill is uh, right what kind yeah. of legislation is that that's he's what, from iowa what, what do you expect that's what yes. Pelosi <laughs> patrick, said about patrick, the, Pat, let, patrick's got his hand up yes patrick no we're just gonna say it it's the same thing as what pelosi said with we need to pass it before we can read what's in it it's the right. same fucking mentality. She said the same fucking thing. That's so right. Let's, let's pass it, then we'll read it. Well, you know, uh, if, if we say that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again but, and getting the same result, then isn't this whole Obamacare thing pure insanity? Aren't they on an insane mission in which they think that every time they try to do the same thing, they're going to get a different result? Well, the difference is one bill is trying to help people. The other bill is looking to screw people. Uh, I don't know. I, I, well, what they're trying to do is help the insurance companies at this point. Well, with, uh, yeah, that, that, that's, oh, that's just what we need to do is help the insurance <laughs> companies. Obamacare, yeah, that's what it's insurance doing. Insurance companies will never do us any harm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. The insurance companies are no good either, but uh, what Obamacare does is it just makes sure that they're getting more premiums. And the people that are getting Obamacare, especially on the low-end plans like the bronze, they can't get any care look, anyway. Look, look, Obamacare is, right. is, is, is yeah. Obamacare, Obamacare is fraught with problems. The only problem it's not fraught with is it comes from a good place. Uh, and it comes from good intentions. Even Obama the other day said, yes, I know there are problems with Obamacare. And they need to be fixed. But they don't need to be replaced. What we have in place, there are some things in Obamacare, like uh, uh, the fact that, you know, you, I think you can be uh, up to 25 or 26, you can still be insured on your parents' plan. Mm-hmm. The fact of no, uh, uh, you know, exi- pre existing <clears throat> conditions, things like that. Those are all very good parts of that bill. It's a, a lot of other parts of it that need shoring up, correcting, fixing. Uh, to make it right for every American, but well, Brian to, mentioned Brian but, mentioned something very interesting. I can't even finish uh, what he I mentioned. Mentioned Romney Care. Romney Care is yeah. basically a state-run uh, uh, insurance program in Massachusetts. Yeah, but we don't want that. Well, I thought that it worked, uh, or at least it, they it said it would work. It may have worked. worked, but you don't want a state, the states, to dictate how a. Uh, uh, a medical system and a medical insurance is going to work because it will change from state to state and we need consistency on something like this so that well, if, if i well, let me finish phil when i move from here and let's say we decide to move back to california that i know i'm going to get the same coverage in california that i was getting here okay uh, and it, 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 if you do, don't do that, you're going to find some people moving to states where they got a better medical plan than other states. I mean, you want a consistency. We want a national health plan. We don't want a regional health plan. When, when, you, would, when you would work for an employer and one employer had a better health plan than another, uh, but the job was basically equal, would you have chosen one employer on the better health plan or not? You know, when before you were getting, uh, the, you know, the Medicare? I never once uh, ever took a job or didn't take a job based on the health plan. 
Well, if... Uh, I said never, Phil. I just answered your question. Okay. Well, some people do. Oh, no. Uh, that, that, you know, it, it had, this has nothing to do with it. We're talking about coming up with a plan where all Americans wind up having some form of medical insurance. And quite frankly, I don't think they should have to pay for it. I think so we're a wealthy you, enough country that we can take care of the, this ourselves. What if you had the Massachusetts plan, but that was duplicated state to state? No, I don't and, want it duplicated. Happen, I don't though. want it duplicated state to state because it's not you going to be duplicated issue. state to state. Because you get to Oklahoma and some doofus in Oklahoma goes, oh no, oh, oh pre-existing conditions we can have here, and let's also blow the the insurance company. You don't want to leave it up to the states, Phil. <coughs> That's insane. That's, That's insane. A cop out. That's a cop out for the republic. Yeah, because it's a cop out because they can't come up with a plan. So they, they ran on, yeah, they're they ran on repeal and replace for seven years, and they can't do it. So now it's like, well, we can repeal it and give it away because this way we could just say we repealed it. Yeah, yeah. And everybody will find out 10 years from now how bad it is, and it'll be the Republicans will own it, whatever it is. Tony so. wants to say something. Yes, Tony. Yeah, I'm agreeing with you. That's a good idea, Alex, like have a national plan. This is what I don't get with Phil. And people, I don't mean like personally. Like he's afraid of the, uh, everybody getting a national plan, like, oh, the government can't touch this and they can't touch that because they can't do anything. But, Phil, it's okay for the government to break up the phone company. It's okay for the government – they say what's a monopoly. They yeah. get involved when they want. And, and by the way, by the way, insurance pretty much is getting to be a monopoly. I think Jeff could probably back me up on this. That I think we have what about only about four insurance companies left, uh, uh, Jeff. If that. And they go out of business so fast too. I don't exactly keep uh, uh, to to uh, quantify them. But I, I, th I think you're right. I, you know, we have we have what uh, 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 we have United, which is also Oxford. OK, uh, we have Blue Cross Blue Shield. What else do we have? I got I got Oscar in work, but I think it's an offshoot of another one. What's it called? Oh, you're one in, you, you're one in California. You have, must be under another company. Wait a minute. You have, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kaiser? Wait a minute. You, you have you have what did you say? You have uh, Oxford, did you say, Tony? In work, I have Oscar, but I think it's Oscar. One of these small, Oscar. Yeah, let me get my card. I think it's one of these companies, a small company under a big one. I can get it for you. Hold yeah, on. It's probably a small wallet. company under a bigger one. It's got to be. It's probably, I thought it was Oscar Meyer Malone. Who's, who's your insurer? Oh, Oscar. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mine's Bob, you know. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but I mean, uh, it, we don't have a lot of these, and, and it's, so it's a monopoly. Yes, uh, Jeff. Um, my uh, my son, uh, when he was uh, 24, 25, 26, he used Obama system. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, he got a full time job, which got it, which allowed him to get insurance, which is good. But my uh, my sister's son, who's an artist and a cartoonist. Uh, that was the only way he could get insurance for him and his family. But it was how? Uh, was through the Obama system. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it, when, when we talk about, like, oh, so many insurance companies left this particular state and is n are not insuring there, it's got to be a small amount. I can't think of more than about four different outfits that insure. <laughs> and uh, they, they many times own other companies. I mean, like Oxford is now also... Uh, United Health, uh, you know, so it's called United Health Oxford now. Uh, but what what what's the name of yours now, Tony? Oscar. Oscar. I got to figure out it's an Oscar. Hold I got free Dunkin' Donuts coupons uh, too. No, no, but we don't care about that. <laughs> uh, that'll ma that'll make you have to use your Oscar eventually. Yeah, I well, get a free hold, Donuts. Hold it up to uh, hold it up to close. Can there. you see it? Well, no, lower it, lower it, down, lower well. a little bit, and then move it into the camera. Move it more into the camera. Let's see. Let me see if I can make it bigger for the audience here. And then we'll I got to see what. Well, it, what is I that? Uh, lift it up. Lift, lift it up a little bit now. Okay, now hold it there. there. Anthony go, Magno. Oscar. There it is. Down Anthony below. Uh, up, up, just, more, just, up more. Up more. Up more. Up more. I never heard okay, of that. Okay. Your finger's actually over it. It's called. Oh, sorry. How's it spell? It was okay. I had to use it for my amoxicillin. I only paid uh, 
No, I didn't pay anything for the medicine, so I guess it's well, okay. Wait a minute, What's it, how's it spelled? Oscar. It looks like Oscock or something. Yeah, it's Oscar, like Oscar Mayer Bologna. Yeah. This is the shit I work for, really. That's It's like yeah, Oscar. Oscar Mayer Bologna, Alex, Oscar. Don't move around so much. Yeah, it is Oscar. It is. Yeah, it's Oscar. Yeah, I it, thought it was a No, that figure. card belongs to the guy, Oscar, who works in the warehouse with you, when, Tony. When I worked at A&P, I used to make sandwiches. I used to take the uh, Oscar Mayer Bologna and cheese. The boss, yeah. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. He used to suntan by the garbage can. Wait a minute. <laughs> now, um, there's... Get a free donut tomorrow. I, I'm looking at... Uh, uh, there's uh, my co-op uh, just came up with a plan for uh, open enrollment for dental and vision. And so, you know, I'm saying to myself, this last year I spent a lot of money on the dentist. And uh, so they have Emeritus, which I never heard of, and Optima, which I did hear of, and I didn't think they were very good, but Emeritus... Is uh, is the insurance wait, company wait, that me, this one's being offered Oscar through? Oscar Insurance. I want to see. <laughs> Except they'll pay ninety percent, ninety percent up to three thousand. Boy, let me but, see you know, here. But Alex is making a good point, Phil. They should get together and give us national health care. No, you know what it is, Tony. The Democrats all oh, want to be in control of your health and your money. I don't believe. And, and, and so forth. Oh, and baloney. Is they, they oh, want baloney. individual choice. Individual oh, baloney. Choice. That's what it's all about. You can either have the government run things like they do at the Politburo, or you can, uh, you know, run your own life and have your... Uh, yeah, your we're not really running our lives, though. Hmm? The government is running my life, and not by, because they... You know what? They're running my life because they're putting my money into building bombs and, and shit that we don't need. And I don't have any say over it, so let them take some of that money and pay for my health care with it. But they're not. But uh, they, they should. But it doesn't matter whether it's a Democrat or a Republican. They're going to take the money, and they're well, and they're true. and you're not going to get it. So I want health care with that money. Then I don't care if they want to build. The hey, I want a lot of things. I want a 12-inch dick, but I'm not going to get it. You know, you know, it, it, it's just not going to. Hey, I want to be six too. You know, it, it's just. Not gonna happen. Yeah, I hate being short. Well, then this country isn't as great as we think it is. Exactly. Because there are plenty you know, other listen, countries out there that have figured this out. It's not going to help you by giving over your power to uh, to a bunch of demagogues. You have <clears throat> given over your power to a bunch of demagogues, yeah, and that's yeah. not going to change. More. At least they could give you something for it, They're for your personal to. being to take care of us. That's the that's the definition of insanity again. That is not the definition. Of insanity. Give it, the definition give of insanity is money. exactly what you're saying, which is give your money to them and let them build bombs with it, and you receive nothing for it. And then they have to go and destroy that stockpile because either blow it up for the sake of blowing it up or destroy it because they go bad. So much no, waste. We'll go bad with guys like Kim Jong Un around. Oh yeah, we'll just blow the world up. You know what? I I, I bought a house. I move in Saturday. Uh, when I sign the mortgage, it's 30 years. I don't even know we'll be around 10 years. So who gives a rat's ass? That's true. Because yeah, you got a guy in charge who is a loose cannon who talks just like Kim Jong Un, who insults people. Whether they're he insults people, he talks. He has to. He's he's got Kim Jong Un with the with the upper hand in a discussion. In the yeah. way he speaks, come on. A nut what? in the White House, and this country has gone to the shitter. Yeah, no, you just don't like him because he's from Queens. Yeah, right. Right, Tony. Like, <laughs> well, actually, that's his only good trait, but it's not. A slip <laughs> it's not even a trait. It's uh, a, a, like a mistake. Said, uh, a mistake by they birth. They let you stay in the, hotel, the house for five hundred dollars. I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, what's I love the Airbnb? They turn it into an Airbnb. Yeah. What? Yes, they did. They turned yeah. it into a well. Actually, what you can do is you can stay there, and mm -hmm. and it you can stay where the president was uh, was born. That that it's a small little house, and then they moved uh, down the street and around the corner and into the center of the block, into this big colonial style mansion. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's big. It's not big, big, but it's big. And that's where that's, that's, that's that where that's where he. Well, that's not bad. I stayed in like a motel when I went to Lindenhurst. It was 175 a night for a few bucks more. You you know you get a decent room, you know. Yeah, but it's in Queens. 
And, and, yeah, and it, like, if you're coming to New York, to be uh, at the end of the F line is not exactly <laughs> yeah, right. the best place, that. right? Right, Jeff? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I grew up in Queens. Anyways. Yeah. So, you know, uh, this was, this is, uh, what's the name of the, uh, my friend Shecky lives there. What's it called? The F train. Last stop. Uh, but what's it called? The, the, the 179th? No, no, the, the air, neighborhood yeah. is oh, called. The neighborhood. Uh, Jamaica uh, States. Jamaica States. States. That's it. Which yeah. is a beautiful area. 1954, when I was born, uh, my parents were living in Sunnyside, Queens. Now, I understand Sunnyside in 1954 was kind of nice, but now now it's a, uh, it's a war zone. I, I oh, no, 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 no. It's not no, that. No. It's not too hard to pass you to no. No, no, it's I'm, not a war zone. It, it, in New York, you're, you find it pretty hard to find war zones now. I mean, yeah. you, you had a time where the Bronx looked like uh, Dresden yeah, after South the Bronx. war, you know. Yeah. I mean, it was utterly destroyed. In fact, I remember once my mother was born in the Bronx and she grew up in the Bronx. And when she came to New York, uh, I, I had a car and she said, can you take me up to the Bronx so I can see my old neighborhood? And I mm -hmm. said, sure. And we went up there. And of course, you know what the Bronx looked like then. It looked like somebody had literally bombed the area. Yeah, yeah it was all burned out buildings. Burned out buildings. And it was terrible. And I said, here we are. The Bronx, the center of the Bronx. This is where you were born, Mom. And she goes, it's changed. <laughs> I said, no shit. You know, hey, says, uh, what, what happened, Bronco, what, what happened to my neighborhood? She couldn't even figure out where she lived, you know, looked so bad, you know, so yeah. burned out. Now you can go up there and it's pretty nice. Really? Yeah. It's, safe. Oh, yeah. it's safe by Yankee Stadium if you take the train. Oh, yeah, very nice. Yeah, so we've gotten very nice. And, and you go, and Brooklyn, which used to have some bad areas, now is like the most expensive, it's almost more expensive than Manhattan to live in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah my how mother's it, from, oh, sorry. What? My, my parents how grew is up in Flatbush. How is it in Queens? Yeah, it's about the same as Brooklyn. High, yeah. uh, well, Queens it, it, huge. It, will, it will always be fine as long as they have the Lemon Ice King of Corona. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is good. I remember, I remember yeah. one night, I've told the story before. Yeah, that's stop me if I've, you've heard it before. Okay, I'll stop. Uh, no, uh, these women, I was at Max's Kansas City, and they said, uh, you got a car? I said, yeah. And they said, let's go get a Lemon Ice. And I said, what do you mean? She said, we're going to the Lemon Ice King of Corona. I said, there's a place called the Lemon Ice King of Corona. They said, you betcha. And we went out, and it was like 11 o'clock at night, and we wind up at this place. It's just like you walk up to it, and you ask yeah. for whatever ice you want, cherry or whatever. And I had a lemon ice because it was the Lemon Ice King of Corona, oh, yeah. after all. I'm and really and I had this thing, and I was stoned out of my mind, so it tasted wonderful. It tasted absolutely wonderful. And uh, hi, Renee. Uh, turn on your camera so we can see you. Hi there. Uh, and it tasted wonderful. And then I was, and then they took me, We maybe they drove. I can't remember. But anyway, we went back to Max's and we went our separate ways. And I said, I've got to go back out to that place sometime. And up until a few years ago, I was never able to find the Lemon Ice King of Corona. Yeah. And I went out to Queens, I think it was to see Albert, and Albert left me off somewhere near a subway, and there across the street was the Lemon Ice <laughs> King of Corona. <laughs> and I went and got one, uh, because I had to have a Lemon Ice, right? <laughs> Brings you, back a lot of memories, right? <laughs> uh, well, 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 the only memory of that night was I didn't get laid. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. You should have took the cherry. I would have got the cherry ice. You would have gotten the cherry. Good. Because I always get the cherry. Lemon's my cherries. favorite. I love lemon Well, it's ice. not called the lemon ice king of Corona because it, 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 you shouldn't have the lemon ice. Oh, no. I don't mean yeah. it like that. You made a good choice. Anybody ever been to the island of Capri? Yeah. No. Well, there's a uh, – they, they have a drink, uh, an ice there. They call it a limoni. Oh, yeah. And they, well, that's uh, all over Italy. Well, that's, I think, where, they, where it originated, uh, or at least that's what I was told. But it was, it's so good. Uh, Limoni. Uh, I bought some of the Limoni syrup, but it's not the same. Yeah. Right. Can you make it? Can you go on the internet and spend like a day hunting down everything and the next day make, trying to make it? I hadn't thought of that, but I, was, I bought the Limoni when I was uh, the, the, the 
syrup when I was in Italy, and and brought it back. But it, it's it in just the water. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's yeah. like water. It's a pee in the water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Makes that lemon ice really good. Yeah. But uh, uh, oh, there's you know every place Our has its own beans. little things. I mean, you know, there's a there's a drink on a beef that called yerbas. Which is the herbs of the island. It tastes a lot like licorice, and it's a, uh, it's green. There's green yerbas and there's yellow yerbas, and you want the, I think you want the 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 gold yerbas is the best, and they, they only make it on Ibiza. That's it, and you you sit out by the beach on a hot day with a hot Mediterranean sun pouring down on you, and I don't drink, but I drank yerbas because somehow it just. <laughs> Tasted right, sipping on this this uh, liqueur basically, and uh, baking in the sun. And mm. every time I would go there, I would take a bottle home with me. And when I got it to New York, I don't know what happens. The air changes or whatever. I pour myself a little glass of Yerbas, and it doesn't taste anything like it does on the island of Ibiza. <laughs> yeah. So, well, it doesn't, yeah. have doesn't have the atmosphere. Doesn't have the atmosphere. Doesn't have the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So, what the hell. So uh, anyway, uh, you know, uh, we're. Uh, do you? Re I'm exhausted already. We're, we're only about what three quarters of a year into this administration now. Yeah. If I'm counting correctly. And uh, it's. He uh, did say he did learn something. Huh? That general seems to be kicking his ass because when Mexico had this horrific quake. Uh, the second horrific quake, um, he said to them, how can we help? And our hearts are with you. And I'm like, fuck you. Being a leader at this point in time, it only took your ass. Yeah, and, 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 and I was ready for him to say, good, God, Mexico's no longer a problem. Yeah. yeah. I know how to help. All that debris, just push it up by the border and you get your wall. So, uh, you know, you got all that debris, all those right. broken buildings. Me, you don't me, have to build me, a wall. Let me, let me, you just build a berm. Let me write that and, down because that's some really great material I got to use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Send it to Kimmel. Like, yeah, send it to Kimmel. Well, think about it. You know, they pay for the wall. All they do is get some back, back hose and they, and they push that debris up over by uh People Kiel. are dead, Phil. Yeah, okay. You it's know, time. Uh, no, uh, no. I'm sorry. Comedy uh, is tragedy plus time, and and each one has an expiration date. Uh, we can make jokes about the uh, uh, Lincoln assassination now, and and get away with it. I don't think so. Uh, you, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, hey, it's uh, it's you know it, it, he wants to help. Yeah, you know, you kill two birds with one stone. That, what is it? Two hundred eighty people, huh? So anyway, uh, we got uh, we got Rob getting ready to move into this new house. Boy, you must be getting excited. Yeah. When you get the tour. Get the tour. I'm. Um, we move in Saturday morning, so um, tomorrow I got to be there at seven a.m. Oh. Having uh, a water treatment system installed, the plumbers coming at seven, and then uh, I got Verizon coming to put the internet in. Then yeah. it'll feel like a house. You I've, I've realized closed? something over the. Oh yeah, we closed the Monday. Huh. Um, I, I realized something. A house isn't a home until the internet's working. That's <laughs> the new. That's the new paradigm. You know. It really is true. Like, house isn't a home. I mean, I'm, I'm walking around the house and I'm going, oh, because the paint's all done and all the rooms has got like a little bit more finish. And, I'm, you know, we're starting to see everything come to shape. And but I'm walking around this house and I'm going, hey, you know, wait a minute. I, I can't fire up the computer. It's it's not home. House isn't a home till the Internet's till, going. So the Internet's on. Yeah. Well, you know something I got to tell you, uh, this new Internet that I have here, which is amazingly fast. I mean, it's, you know, it's almost a gig up and a gig down. It's like 860 a, a, a down and something like 900 something up or something like that. It's not exactly symmetrical. But it is so fast that it has in many ways changed my entire life. It is the most solid, rock solid, this fiber. It's the most rock solid internet I've ever had. I, I haven't had it go, it, it, did it ever go out on you, uh, Rob? No. Nope. No, I had some problems early on when I first moved into the, my old house. Yeah. And it had something to do with it had something to do with some 
water uh, after about two months of complaining and nine million people coming and them doing and them doing tests on the line it turned out that there was some damage to one of the uh, underground cables or something like that. Water was getting in and it was causing problems. They, when they fixed that, that it was, I, to this day, to, you know, till I shut it off when I moved, never a problem. I've, I've never, nine years I, I was there. I've never had a problem here with it so far. Knock on wood. But I, I was amazed. I mean, I'm, I've never been so happy with a service uh, okay. in my life, to be honest with you. It's nice. You know. It, it really is working out very nicely. So, uh, Renee, how's everything in Hawaii? Um, or as you, you the, the, the Howleys, or not the Howleys, how the... Uh, I am the, a uh, You're a Howley. You're a Howley. But uh, oh, that's, not, that's not a great term. It means, you know, white guy from the mainland. Uh, yeah, jackass but, from the mainland. Jackass from no, the mainland. Actually but, it no, means but as a... Akamai, comma... What's the term? Akumai Kamaina? Something like that? Yeah. Is, is, am I close? Yeah, I think you're that. It, it, it should be Kamaina. Kamaina. Right? Yeah. Kamaina. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Akumai Kamaina. Uh, uh, it, That's local. What, now, why was I calling you that? Uh, there was that, something that had the to word do with local. Hawaii. Kamaina. Yeah, uh, but anyway, yeah, but you know what? So the per problem is, is if you're a white person that wasn't born here, stop okay. acting like you're a local. It, it, it you're just, it's not. You're, you're a Howley. Go you always will be a Howley, and uh, today a Howley, tomorrow a Howley. Even Dog the Bounty Hunter. Yeah. 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 Oh, and Dog the Bounty Hunter's wife has got um, throat cancer. That, really? Yeah, they just diagnosed her. So I hope she gets better. She. What do you mean? I thought Dog the Bounty Hunter was a guy. No, no, Dog the Bounty Hunter's yeah, wife. Uh, oh, his wife. wife. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So. I had a friend. But, who, um, had so a friend there's an issue. Either. I had a hissy fit fight with at and I'm sorry. I just cannot hang on with them anymore. It's just too difficult to deal with them. And I called Verizon. I can't get Fios down here, but at least I can get my whole network back onto Verizon. So. Well, that's good. I'm going that's that good. way. Uh, I just, AT and T has only one line of, so when you call technical or when you call support, AT and T has a first line, of uh, a first line of people to answer. They no longer have a second line. There's no. I would like to speak to your supervisor. There is so their their new corporate strategy. Yeah. Is to first line people de-escalate the problem even if you don't know the answer. Right. Well, uh, let, let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question, though. Sorry. Uh, I uh, I got a thing from AT and T. Uh, mm -hmm. I, how I what I love is that you you subscribe to something because I'm an AT and T customer through my mobile, and yet they keep sending you stuff. I mean, FiO still sends me offers, <laughs> even though oh, I've like, signed. Yeah, yeah, I, I really signed wish they cross those databases better. Yeah, I really wish they would. But anyway, I get this thing from AT and T, and you know they own Direct TV now. So they, they have this thing called DirecTV Now. That's my fight. Which is, uh, is an online service in which mm -hmm. you get, I don't know, 40, uh, 50, 60 of the major stations for $40, $40 a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can also use it, I think, as a, uh, a DVR because it will store f shows in the cloud for so many days and whatever. Anyway. I don't think so. It, it, but go it, ahead. It, it said you can get Direct TV now, and then it says in smaller print, only ten dollars a month if you're an AT and T subscriber. So I'm wondering, but, can I get it for ten dollars a month because I have AT and T Mobile? No. Nope. Sounds like it. That's what it sounds nope. like. That's what. Well, it sounds first like. off, uh, Direct TV now is is its own city and subsidiary, so yeah. you don't get to talk to anyone. You only get to chat, find help for yourself and chat for yourself. And the funny thing is about it is that the people who design the app, once you're in the app, there's no way to get back to your account. You have to sign out in order to go in and then see before you click on watching the DirecTV now. And it's just irritating as hell. 
I mean, I couldn't stand it. And so there's no support for it at all. And if you talk to a support person, their response is that they're telling us that we are no longer allowed to escalate calls, that we are we have to de-escalate the situation. Well, you know, everybody now has these different plans. Uh, uh, Hulu has theirs, where they have something like, oh. I don't know, 100 stations, and they have a DVR system and all of that. They're advertising okay. right now uh, that, uh, the, you know, the new TV and so forth. I'm thinking, I'm getting tired of Sling. I was going to switch over to Hulu, the expanded one. Uh, to see well, Hulu, better. you can actually buy the, a DVR service. It will put your shows up on the cloud so you can record them, basically, and then watch okay. them at another time. Also, I have the Hulu. I pay an extra $4 a month to Hulu to be able to watch all those shows without commercials. But you don't and have boy, the is that pleasure. Doing what? The the one that's like forty or fifty bucks a no, month. No, because I because I have you know I have files. Something else. Right. I, I already have something else, uh, which I'm paying a hundred dollars less than I was paying to Time Warner. You know. Yeah, I, I was just looking on uh, about files. I can't get it in this oh, area. Oh, by the way, I'm so proud mm -hmm. of my. Let me take time out to thank my business manager. Uh, back uh, when I first came to New York, when I first came to New York, I was up to debt because I, I was completely out of money and then I was living on credit cards. So uh, in about 2006, my business manager saw that there was a credit card. Chase, I think it was, was willing to give him a credit card. Citibank was willing to give him a credit card at only two and a half percent interest per year. So he said, let's go for it. So he put me on that thing and he put twenty two thousand dollars on there and every month he paid off a little bit a little bit and a little bit he wrote me the other day he said i just made the last payment i paid off the twenty two thousand dollars you owed citibank this is already how many years later 10 years later he said you are now you ready for this i'm the worst kind of credit you can get you are now debt free mm. i owe That's nothing to anybody that and that bothers me because as I'm getting older and closer to the, uh, uh, as my, uh, John Cleese described it once to me, the yawn ever yawning, the uh, grave ever yawning. I I'd like to build up some debt because I have nobody who they can go after when I'm gone. So, well, they go after uh, your wife. Well, they you want to make an investment in a in a slightly used house. <laughs> <laughs> Have you hey, you sold your house though, didn't you? Yeah, but I got another one. Oh, you got oh. another one. Oh, are you, sure. and you get out of there if I gave you the right price. Yeah, yeah well, hey, room. <laughs> Give you a room. Uh, yeah, we'll start a new. A You'll new... have a studio close by. Yeah, but that's right. And it's a nice blue. I painted it blue. It looks really nice. I oh, can't okay. wait to. Well, I can hardly wait. wait. So can you I... can you chroma key with blue? Yeah, I guess not you that can. kind of blue. It's oh. yeah, not that. It won't. You don't want to paint any room chroma key blue. No. It, that is, it, it is an ugly form of blue. Yeah. And you don't really use blue, you use green. Yeah, yeah. They, they stopped using blue. Yeah, because people, because, well, the reason is, is that most people do not wear stuff that's green. Yeah. And they do wear stuff that's blue like blue jeans and whatever. Although a good chroma key now can distinguish between blue jeans and the blue background, but uh, no, you want, you want the green. So uh, the green screen as it were. Mm. So, uh, and I know Phil is now drooling cause he wants his green screen. I just have to download that OBS and uh, uh, I'll try the uh, chroma key with that. Yeah. Well. Uh, I, I've got to move this uh, this armoire that's behind me because uh, mm -hmm. it's taking up the space I need for the screen. Uh, I'm going to move it to the living room. Oh, I see. Well, anyway, what what you know, uh, we are uh, just hoping and praying now. We've we've seen this through that we get a whole bunch of new spots from uh, uh, promos from from Rob. Oh, because he's moving in. Is uh, yeah, that why you care? <laughs> because if 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 I hear a couple of these one more time. <laughs> uh, I can't even listen to him anymore. I, I even I even started going with a couple that uh, Albert did, <laughs> you know. Wow, do some of Jim's. Well, I would do them, but uh, you know, Rob has just such a great voice, and he also has great ideas. Uh, 
and uh, I'm sure once he starts doing stuff, he's going to do a lot of them because he's probably you've probably got uh, you probably can go and stir crazy not being able to do something in a studio, right? I have. I, I'm looking forward to getting getting back in the swing of things. Yeah. Uh, you know where there's going to be some good house buying opportunity? Puerto Rico. Uh, you know why is it people face a tragedy and you've got to make a joke about it? It's not a joke. It, it's it's real. I mean, you know when when would you be able to buy beachfront property? Uh, and I'm sure there's probably plenty of it available oh, oh, great. right now. Yeah, yeah. All you can future. think of is take advantage of some down and out people. No, people are going to want to get out of there. No, you know, some people and can't. And why would you want to buy it? It's gonna. You know, you've got this idea. Again. You've got this idea that everybody has the ability to pick up uh, stakes and move somewhere else at the drop of a hat. I'm sorry, that some just, people just you can't. Just, you just buy it, and, and you hold on to it. And ten years from now, it'll be worth something. Patrick's yeah. been quiet tonight. Patrick, anything to say? No, not really. I mean, I I said my piece earlier. Yeah, yeah. I'm, and, and how, do you, how, uh, uh, how do you think it's going uh, with uh, with our president now? He has a forty percent approval rating now. I oh. yeah, I mean, I I didn't watch his speech at the UN. I, I uh, was you know it, the thing is like a lot of everyone on, on the panel. I don't really give a fuck. I. I don't live my life according to what he says or does. Uh, I, I look at him the same as I did Obama. Yeah. I didn't vote for you. Um, you're going to be there for four years. I got to put up with you. And unless it's a national uh, speech, you know, like a State of the Union or an address of some sort, I'm not going to bother watching him because I don't give a shit. Yeah. I didn't give a shit about Obama. And the only president I ever made any effort, no matter what he did to speak, was Clinton, because he was such a great orator. I mean, I didn't get, I didn't care what he was talking about. I just loved. He, he was very seductive. He was very yeah, seductive. I loved watching him, but everybody after that, I mean. Well, this Obama, he, uh, Trump is the worst because somebody should really sit down with Trump and say. Uh, uh, Donald, we've got to have teleprompter lessons. You know, we've got to teach you how to read a teleprompter and not look like you're reading it. I mean, he just he lo he's just always looking over, and you know he's just reading this flat screen. And I just don't know why they don't do something to, you know, e correct that situation. Like somehow put the screen in stupid. front of him or something. What? He's too stupid. He's too stupid. Yeah, good learn a lesson anyway. I mean, but it's, it's embarrassing because, it, as you're saying, the great thing about Clinton was he gave a speech, and even if you didn't like the guy, you listened to it. You know? He, how, made, he made the I words did... live. And That's in the mean. case of Donald Trump, it's like you want to fall asleep because, you know, he's just reading something. He's not embellishing it. He's not giving it character. I mean, he, it's really, it's, it's embarrassing. It's downright embarrassing. How, but it took us years to get uh, George Bush to to be able to function normally in front of a teleprompter. George, no, George Bush wasn't terrible though. George well, Bush, okay, he George terrible, Bush, but he was George, still not. George Bush great. always came off as stupid. That's what he came off as. He always seemed he's dense, not you know. Huh? Yeah. He's not he's stupid. Just, no, he's George not. Bush. But he but he always came off seeming dense. You know? Yeah, he did. I'm not sure if it was the close set eyes or whatever it was, but you mean Dick not Cheney? a stupid. No, 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 George, George Bush, W. Bush, uh, but he and he's not a stupid man. He's by no means stupid. No, I, and I'm not going to say that he is, uh, but uh, not as bright as the other presidents we've had, though. I don't think he's as bright as Obama. I don't think he's as bright as uh, as Clinton. But he, you know, it, it, he he certainly wasn't uh, wasn't stupid. What'd you think of Reagan? I I thought Reagan was an idiot. Uh, Reagan didn't want to. It, Reagan was not presidential at all. He was terrible. Well, I thought he was. I yeah. thought he was all form and no substance. I thought he was right. very presidential. Yeah, all which form is and no Trump. substance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. All form and no substance. I think that's a good way of describing him. Yeah. Uh, he also, uh, you know, Ronnie said something in the interview that I did with Ronnie about her. 
involvement with Reagan when she was working for Barbara Walters in saying that when he would get together with other people, all he wanted to talk about was Hollywood and movies and stuff like that. He didn't care what was going on in Washington. And he was president of the fucking United States at the time. So, you know, uh, I, don't, I, I don't think he was a guy who, who was 100% understood what being president was all about, but he knew how to be a movie star, and so therefore he played the part of the president. And he did that brilliant. And he did that brilliant. Yes, he did. Hey, listen, everybody. Uh, good, uh, good little chat tonight. Went everywhere tonight with it. Uh, t- uh, Phil, thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, Mike, Pleasure. thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Always a pleasure to have you here, you, as well as you, Tony. Scott, call us more often. You've been away. We've missed you. I've been sleepy. It's, okay, it's well. football season. Uh, yes, and Rob. Uh, I hope we see you tomorrow night too. Uh, uh, and I, uh, this weekend is the weekend, right? Yep, Saturday morning. He thinks oh, oh, good. You must be excited. Tomorrow morning. I'm oh, yes. so happy Absolutely. for you. And of course, Jeff, great talking to you. And Renee in Hawaii, thank you for calling us. Everybody, why don't you just do a big wave to just the whole world out <laughs> there and say goodbye to them? Okay. And that's our citizens panel, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and they're all going the way of, uh, of, uh, of most citizen panels. I hang up on them. Uh, and the next show to use these, uh, these lines, if you want to be part of a citizen's panel, is, of course, you know it, the intersection, which is next over most of this same station, followed by connections at 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time. I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Nice having you here. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.